Good afternoon, Pastor David. How are you doing, John? Welcome, everybody, to a random moment, unfiltered. And you see that uh, there's a little bit of difference. We were having some sound issues with me behind, and now they had to widen the camera to get me in. <laughs> <laughs> and so I uh, want to welcome those who are joining us, uh, maybe for the first time. I want to say welcome and God bless you. Uh, Pastor, how was your trip to Mexico? Yeah, I thought it went well. I got back safely. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, it went good. And it was, uh, you, you went to, to a retreat with CCA Northern Mexico pastors yes. that were there. And uh, it, you allowed me to go. It was a great time. I, I thought it was a blessed time. There was uh, not as good as the actual retreat, but on the way home, we stopped at this, uh, maybe it was the second heaven, maybe not, it wasn't the third <laughs> heaven. <laughs> well, in heaven, they don't have flies. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. yeah, we stopped at Manuel's, got tacos, but... But they had flies. <laughs> yeah, flies are the entertainment there. <laughs> yep. uh, Pastor, today's uh, topic has to do with uh, celebrity pastors. These pastors that have become celebrities that either they've been self-appointed or... And somehow the, the people have elevated him to this. And a couple of questions. This was from one of the brothers in our church. Uh, and I'm quoting what he says here is, well-known pastors, well-known worship teams, well-known uh, speakers that come to churches are now uh, charging exorbitant prices for their, there's no longer really an honorarium there. Just they got green rooms that are filled with flowers and, a spread and, and it just seems that along with that has come this this almost like the celebrity pastor celebrity worship status is that what is your view or your personal observation on whether the church promotes this or is this something that promotes within one person gosh that's a that's a tough one that really is because there are there are god-fearing god-loving men whom god has used who is who have been elevated to position of, uh, of a spiritual authority, if you will. They have, uh, they have been placed in a place of credibility and, and they've honored the Lord and have remained humble and used by him in mighty ways. Obviously, the one that I think of first is my own pastor, Chuck Smith, who in many ways, Pastor Chuck was regarded by many as the father of the Jesus movement. And yet he was one who very carefully and consistently rejected being placed in a position of, of uh, super importance or celebrity. So there are godly men, men some of whom I've had the chance to get to know and to love who, who truly have remained faithful to the Lord and faithful in their ministries and and have been aware of their own shortcomings and God has continued to use them. There are others, unfortunately, that I have seen and know who have uh, found this attention to be so attractive that they not only desire it, but they seem to foster uh, even more attention uh, they want for themselves. And that to me is a very tragic thing because the Lord appoints one and the Lord elevates one, but he also is very capable of bringing them back down. And so the church, I think in some ways, feeds that. Again, there are pastors that, that have to, it seems that they have to have their names on the lips of, of, of people. They, you go to the webpage to look for their church and you see only pictures of him as if he's the only person in the church or the only one doing the ministry. And then you have, you know, the temptation of naming your ministry after yourself, you know, the such and so ministry with so and so or so and so ministries. Mm -hmm. You know, there are many of those and name recognition seems to be something people like and want and it's a marketing technique and all, but John, it's, it's, it's just not a good place for any minister. We, we are called servants. The Apostle Paul spoke of himself in that way, and he said uh, that he is simply a servant, a bond slave of the Lord Jesus Christ. When people were speaking concerning others who were well-known, you know, uh, Apollos, uh, uh, Cephas, and all, he made sure that uh, 
And he said, who is Apollos? Who is Paul? We're just bond servants. We're servants of the Lord. And if anybody had the capacity to be regarded in superstardom as a superstar, it would have been Paul, quite obviously. Not only he, but also others of the same kind of magnitude, like the Apostle Peter or a John or a James. But they, you don't see any indication in Scripture that they ever allowed that to go to their own heads. They didn't become arrogant and, and proudful over it. So I think it is a, an oxymoron to call a pastor a celebrity, a celebrity pastor. Those two words should not be combined. But are there? Are there those who have been elevated by, by their, uh, their flock? Yeah, uh, I've, I've known more than one over the years. And um, it's just a bad place to be because this man, um, if he's honest with his, his, his people and himself, um, he knows that he's just a sinner saved by the grace of God. And he should certainly remember that at all times. So then there's that, that danger of that celebrity's, the, it is an oxymoron, that celebrity status begins to overshadow the centrality of Jesus Christ. And he begins to take over, and that's a dangerous place, because uh, then now you're begetting your sheep, uh, sheep. What is that? Uh, shepherds beget sheep. There's a. Yeah. I I know what you're trying to say, but my mind is thinking of something else. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> healthy, <laughs> sheep, healthy sheep beget sheep. Right, and but there's a flip side of that, right? Well, sick sick shepherds will produce sick, sick sheep. sheep. You know, I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory I will give to no one else, neither my praise to graven images. The Lord is not one who shares his honor and glory with anybody, John. And uh, it, it is a very bad place for the pastor, and it's a dangerous place for the sheep. The sheep sh should regard and honor their pastor, but he doesn't walk on water. He didn't die on a cross, and he most certainly isn't perfect. Um, I, I would first point to myself in that way and say, I know that. And uh, you have to know yourself. You have to know your weaknesses. You have to be aware of your own shortcomings. And, and it's very important for a pastor to never place himself above the sheep. He, he is there to care for, minister to, to be an example of a believer, but he is, he's never superior in the kingdom of God. He simply has a different role and a different kind of authority. But I, I really, I'm concerned for the condition of the church today because, you know, there are men on television who they're, they're taking God's money and they're putting their faces out there as if they're the only people who have the capacity to reach the lost you, or, or to teach the sheep. And, and it's creating a, a competition, an attitude of competition in the body of Christ, where people people who who are uh, in need of a hero, well, there are many guys out there who are more than willing to step in and fulfill that role for them. And uh, I'm telling you, that's just not a healthy place, John. It's 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 not a good way to look at ministry. And uh, I really feel it's been it's been very harmful to the church. Mm -hmm. Well, Pastor, thank you for sharing that uh, because it, I wanted to hear what your views and, and uh, how this is tolerated and it continues to perpetu uh, perpetuate through the church, whether the church is elevated or for somehow there's that narcissistic kind of uh, thinking that I'm this, I'm that and elevates oneself. And so just wanted to get your feedback on that. Uh, but yet tomorrow we're, uh, we have service Wednesday evening. I want to invite you guys to come out and join us. What's your, your teaching in? I'll be closing off Ephesians chapter 6. I'll be speaking beginning at verse 18, closing on uh, prayer as part of the uh, weaponry that the Lord has given to us, and then concluding the study by looking at the last few verses. And we'll be closing uh, next, uh, this Wednesday, we'll be closing our series in Ephesians and celebrating uh, communion. So I'm looking forward to that. Very much. So you guys invite you guys to come on out. We keep saying this COVID restrictions have lifted and love to have you come out and worship yeah. with the church Great. family, uh, celebrate communion, spend time in God's word together. I mean, especially in these last days, this is what we need and this is what's needed. 
And so, Pastor, thank you so much. Of course. Always want to, again, always keep it in front of you. Israel's coming up in in uh, in March. In a few months. In yeah. a few months, yes. And so we were just looking at some pictures before we came over here and talking about some of the temple things and uh, kind of getting stirred up about that. So if you guys want to come, we can re you can register online through our website, calvaryccv.org. You can go to our events tab. You'll see the Israel flyer there. Just click on it. Uh, but we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And Pastor, thank you so much for of your course. time. God bless you guys, and we look forward to seeing you. Thanks, Pastor. Amen.